So, we have a story to write. I'm going to start with Lionel because you published your book first, right? And you have an interesting story, so want to tell us how you got from there to here. Well, uh, you know, there, there was a time in about the year uh, uh, 1999 that all the book publishers uh, were looking for books that would appeal to the Latino community, I think. And uh, one of the largest book publishers in the world uh, contacted both my cousin Diana and myself uh, to write a book. And I got uh, a call one day from a, from a literary agent that said, would you, do you think you could write a book uh, of success, how Latinos can be successful in the United States? And I said, well, I don't know if I could, but let me give it a try. And uh, so, she kind of gave me not much of an outline. She says, if you were to write such a book, how would you write it? What would the chapters be? Give me an outline of what you would do. So I worked on it, and uh, I sent her, uh, maybe, I don't know, a month later, I sent her a draft, and she called me back, and she said, this is terrible. This is horrible. Uh, start all over start all over so I, I say well, well, well how is it horrible uh, give me some input so that I can improve it she said it's just so horrible start all over <laughs> and uh, uh, so I started all over and gave it a second try and she says it's a little bit better but it's still pretty horrible so give it another try so on the third try, she said, you know, you've got the germ of some good ideas, but there's no way you could ever write a book. But I will do this. I think there's, you've got germs of a good idea, but you cannot write, so I am going to assign you a ghostwriter. And this ghostwriter is one of the very, very best ghostwriters in the country. Now, here's the way it worked back in 2000, in 1999. This is almost 20 years ago. Uh, is that there were these, there are these ghostwriters in New York that did ghostwriting for people that had an idea but couldn't write, like me. And uh, they would help you write it. And they wouldn't charge anything unless you sold the book. And if you sold the book, then they would get half of whatever the advance was at the time. And, if they, and, and at that time, they actually gave you an advance. If they thought you would take your draft to several publishing companies in New York, and if any book publishing company would like it, they would bid on it. And they would actually say, I will buy, I will pay X number of dollars to have the privilege of publishing it. Well, this fellow said, I will, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a chance with you. I'll help you write. So he came to San Antonio. We did an outline. The, the rest of the time, I would get up to write a book. It takes focus and it takes time. And they gave me a year, a, actually six months to do the draft and then six months to do the final and uh, so we had a year to do the whole thing we uh, wrote what we thought would be a good a, a good book together uh, and we took it to the publishers and the publishers bid on it and the highest bidder said, I'll give them $120,000 to write a book. And, uh, well, you know, it's better than nothing because the other one was 100000 and the other one was maybe 50000 I don't know what the number two and three were, but we were able uh, to get that. So she said, okay, go ahead and write it. Then what, they, what you did at the time is that they would give you a contract 
and you had to have that book completely written in six months. Uh, so what I would do at the time, because I had a business, a full-time business, I would get up at four in the morning, I would start writing from 4.30 to 8.30, then I would shower and get ready for work to be at my office at nine o'clock. But I did devote four days a week for six months, from 4.30 to 8.30, did nothing but do my best to write it. I would send him the drafts, he would rewrite them, and that's how it happened. I could have never done it on my own. I could have never done it without the help of the literary agents or the help of my ghostwriter. And it was just a fluke that came out of nowhere. Somebody called me one day and said, could you write such a book? I couldn't write it. They gave me the people that could help me write it and could help me publish it. And uh, they, it went under the Penguin brand that is one of the uh, best book, book parts of, uh, in the country. And uh, so I thought I was going to be rich and famous. <laughs> I went to New York City and at Barnes & Noble in New York City, right there, in Lincoln Center, I walk into the store and at eye level was my book. I am going to be rich and famous. Nada. It did not happen. Uh, I spent my half of the 120000 which was $60,000, promoting the book and traveling so what happens is you go to the best bookstores all over the country. You have to pay your own airline fare, your own hotel. You go on radio shows, you go on TV shows. And then you have a book reading at a bookstore. 50 people show up, five people buy the book. You get $2 for each. That's your, what you do. So you make 10 bucks and you spend $3,500, you know? <laughs> So that's kind of the way that it went, and then my $60,000 was gone. I didn't make a cent, I didn't get rich, I didn't get famous, but I had a book. And you know, and, and, the, and the book I think sold well, it sold about uh, something like 25,000 copies nationwide, not nearly enough to be a, 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 a best seller, but even today I get emails that say, I read your book and it changed my life. And I, I get these, I, I get these, uh, you know, maybe one or two a month, uh, and I get them from, from, from people all over the world because it was translated into Spanish, and I'll get a, a letter from Argentina or somebody from Spain or somebody uh, like that that says, I followed in your advice and it changed my life. So, uh, you know, I think all in all, I'm, I'm very happy that it happened. It was a total fluke, but that's my story.